six. We're down at point 2E, if I remember right from last week. We are on the Christian's attitude towards self. And as we talked about, uh, ourselves can be sometimes our greatest enemy when it comes to uh, salvation. We know that Satan is out there, but Satan can't overtake us. Remember, God has said that we're not going to be tempted above that which we are able to bear. Satan can't overtake us. Satan can't force us to sin. On the other side, God won't abandon us. Scriptures are very clear that, uh, that uh, what can separate us from the love of God, Paul goes through an entire section in Romans chapter 8. But notice that self wasn't there. We can separate ourselves from the love of God, but God won't walk away from us. We walk away from him. That's what happened to the Gentiles if you read Romans chapter 1. God didn't go anywhere. It's the Gentiles that went off into idolatry and, for, and worshipped other gods. God was there. And so the Christian's attitude uh, towards oneself is one of proper evaluation. Uh, many never see themselves who they are. They like to cover up uh, um, with uh, other things, when we do that physically, we put on makeup, we put on uh, other things that will change our appearance, and we never see our physical selves the way that they usually are. Well, we can do that spiritually too. And if we're not evaluating our lives, we're not seeing the problems that might need to be fixed. We're not to think too highly of ourselves. We should know and prove ourselves. We should make a constant examination of ourselves, and we should consider ourselves. That's what we talked about last week. Coming down to point E then, we need to esteem others better than ourselves. That's hard. Uh, so let's uh, uh, go to uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. And Callan can get that. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourself. How hard is that to do? It's very easy for Cal to read that verse. How hard is that to do? Well, most people are very selfish people. Yeah, well, a lot of people, and we can get that way too. Let's not let's not say well. Since we're Christians, we've overcome that. We're not selfish people. We can be selfish, too. We can come along and, and, and think, well, if, it, if something isn't good for me, if I have a problem, I'm not... Someone, else, someone else's problems are nothing compared to what my problems are, when that may not be the case. Uh, we often look at ourselves first. How is that going to affect me? And we forget... How is that going to affect others, too, Gord? Well, it, even in day-to-day, -day, uh, you, you know uh, how many people drive on the roads and the highways. How many of us are going down the highway and, it, and somebody cuts into the, 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 the on-ramps just to pass everybody, and you know they're coming along, mm -hmm. and then they try and squeeze in front of you. Are you, you got two choices. Are you going to be selfish or selfless? Mm -hmm. Right? Just because this guy is being a selfish driver, right? It's best just to let him in and go his way. Don't, yeah. don't, don't think, well, oh, I'm going to punish him because he's doing this. That's being selfish, too. Yeah. And in, in, in essence, that's being dangerous as well, if you're not yeah. careful, because he's still over there. He's got to get in, and so by being selfish, you might be putting other people's lives in danger mm -hmm. uh, with that driving. But when it comes to just considering others, when it, uh, I, I've said this many times in lessons, where sin is not just what we do to ourselves, but we can cause others to sin by our careless actions. The action itself might not have been sinful for us, 
But if it leads someone else into sin, we've sinned. Uh, as far as I, I, I compare this going into a bar to have to have chicken wings. Well, going stepping into the bar, that's not a sin. Sitting down and have, having chicken wings is not a sin. However, if another one, another Christian who's not as strong as you are, just witnesses you going into a bar, a bar is where people go to drink. And they think, well, that person's strong, so therefore it must be okay and uh, to go and do that. In the Bible, it was idol temples, where where um, where uh, we had people going and eating meat in the idol temples. There was nothing wrong with the meat. It doesn't matter if it was worship. It was offered to an idol. The idol's nothing. The problem was other people saw uh, the person, the stronger Christian, eating in the idol temple, and thought it was okay to worship the idols as well as worship God. And so, the Christian who is strong was not considering someone else. And we need to esteem others better than ourselves. If someone else has, has needs, well, if we, can, if we can offer help to those needs, we should. We say, well, it might affect my day. It might change my schedule. It might cost me money. Well, where to sacrifice? you see Tammy over there? No? Oh, okay. didn't go there. oh, you didn't go there. Okay, mm -hmm. Jeremy. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're told to be good to all men, especially the household. Yeah. You know, and to know to do good, yeah. not as a sin. Yeah. So we are given guidelines on how to handle these situations. Yeah. And and <clears throat> we need to we need to um, remember that we there are other people in this world besides us. And there are some times where we're not able to help, uh, where, where things get in the way and we're unable to. <clears throat> but in this day and age, maybe we can try to find someone who is able to. And that's, that's important as well, uh, that, we, that we are considering others. We are esteeming others. What does it mean to esteem? <laughs> Mean to esteem? Put, a, put above you? Yeah. To put their their needs above your own needs, I guess? Yeah. To raise someone else up. So we are to esteem God over all and others above ourselves. We, we come at the bottom of the rung. When we get married, our spouse is to be esteemed higher than us. Our children, we need to take care of our children, sometimes to the detriment of of us, and so um, we should esteem others better than ourselves. We, we should not be like the Pharisee. We're not going to read Luke 18, 9 to 13, but that's the parable of, this, of the publican and the Pharisee. The Pharisee was very self-centered, thought only of themselves. Look, Lord, what I have done. I'm not like that person over there. <clears throat> well, that's... Uh, that's not the attitude of Christians to have. We're to esteem others better than ourselves. The scriptures teach that a Christian should possess the attitude of conquering self. Conquering, overcoming our selfish desires. Uh, the selfishness is something that we have to overcome. It starts from a baby. A baby is very selfish. They're not sinning when they are. They can't do anything for themselves. They can't feed themselves. They can't change themselves. They can't move around. They need others to help them out. But they're very selfish. They're only concerned about themselves. They'll cry in the middle of the night. They don't care if you're, you were trying to sleep. It's about them. But parents need to, to train that out of a child when the child is able to do some things for themselves. And a child needs to be taught, okay, it is not just about you. And adults need that as well. So conquering self involves denying one's self. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. This would be Gord. Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 to 26. Matthew 16, 24 to 26. <clears throat> Matthew 16, 
that Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would serve, save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Okay. Uh, verse uh, 26 as well. Oh, sorry. Uh, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? All right. Going back to verse 24. If anyone, if anyone desires to come after me. So there's nobody who would not fit in that verse who wants to follow Jesus. The people who don't want to follow Jesus, well, they're not going to do this. But if anyone wants to follow Jesus, what do they have to do? Why is that important? Deny oneself. Oh, yeah, well... Because, I mean, you can deny uh, your wants of the world, you can deny your worldly pleasures, you can deny your, your, your life and turn your whole life over to Him. Uh -huh. You're giving up... You're giving up a lot. You're, you are giving up. You're coming along and saying, Lord, your will is going to be my will. Not my will is going to be your will. Your will is going to be my will. That's what I want. I am going to follow you. I'm going to take up his cross. His that cross symbolizes suffering. In other words, you are going to take that on. You're going to recognize that you're different than the world. Uh, you're going to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. That's why some people never become Christians, and why some Christians are not faithful to God. They do not put God first. Anything else that comes up, well, I can't go to worship, because... Uh, this came up, or that came up. And I'm not talking about things we can't control. I'm talking about things we can control. We have made a conscious decision. I'm going to put that first. I'm going to put that first. Uh, we were reading, in Le well, I guess we weren't reading in Leviticus yet. I've written, and that's why I remember it. In our study of Leviticus, Nadab and Abihu were killed by God for offering strange fire uh, to God. And one of the things, one of the parts of that story we rarely read is Aaron and his sons were not allowed to go and bury them. Other people buried them. They had to remain in the tabernacle of me. Because they, they were tasked with service to the Lord. And God had struck those two men down uh, for sin, and they weren't going to, they weren't to mourn over that. But think about that. Two of your children... Are, are killed, and you're not allowed to mourn them. That's not an example saying we can't mourn our children. But it is saying God comes first. And we need to put God first. And so, when we don't divide, deny ourselves, that's why some people never become Christians or remain Christians. We need to conquer. Conquering self involves not living just for yourself. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, let's get verse 4. We read verse 3 before, uh, earlier, but let's get verse 4, and we'll get that to Andre. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Is it wrong for me to be concerned for my needs? No, it is not wrong. We're, we're not told that we have to starve that we have to go naked, that uh, we have to live out on the street, that, there, that our needs don't matter. <clears throat> However, this verse says, let each of you look out not only on his own interests, but also the interests of others. So we should have one eye on our needs and a one eye on others' needs. If we don't do that, what are we doing, like as far as other people, other people who are non-Christians, they can do that. Uh, we, we often see there are, there are many people who are not Christians who are charitable. 
who, who are kind to others, who will help others out who are in need. That's not just a trait of Christians. I think a lot of, a lot of men and women uh, take that stance. They do have compassion, and we see it every day. But if we don't do that as Christians, what does that say about us? We're no better than the world. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're no better than those who aren't Christians and, and, not, and not doing those things. And so we need to make sure that we're not just concerned about ourselves. We are concerned about others. And if others have needs and we can help them out, then we help them out. Do you have something to tell them? No, I was thinking about when Jesus said, um, I don't know how to phrase it though that when he said well the world does that like um everyone you love does only that. those who love you yeah you you uh, that was matthew 5 that we didn't read but that's there yeah it's easy to love those who love you yeah. the world does that and uh, well, well, that, that's easy it's just it's much harder to love those who hate you i was reminded this week uh I, i'm not getting into politics but there was a, a prayer breakfast uh, last was it Thursday or Friday, one or the other, and one of the pastors there got up and said, "How many people love their enemies?" And and, and it's hard to love their enemies. And, and then the president of the United States got up and said, "I don't think I agree with you." And, uh, and that caught everyone by surprise because he, he <coughs> you know, he's he's a man who very very much so. You cross him, and he's going to cross you back. And so that's not the attitude of Christians to have. It's hard to love those who hate you. It's hard to do that. It's very easy to, someone hits you, you hit them back. Someone steals from you, you take something from them. Uh, as Gord would say on the highway, someone cuts in front of you, what do you do? You, you get in the other lane, you cut them right back off. Uh, like, very easy to do that. That's anger. Uh, that, get, that gets us, and that's reaction. We need to make sure that we are looking out for others, not just ourselves. Selfishness is one of the greatest enemies that we have. And the self as individual confers a blessing on the world when he dies. Uh, we're going to leave that one a little bit aside. Conquering oneself involves not deceiving oneself. We can deceive ourselves many ways. One of those ways is we can say we have no sin. Let's go to uh, 1 John chapter 1. Henry, you want to get 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8. He was now and at the night. 1 John chapter 1 verse 8. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. John here is reminding us not to think too highly of ourselves. To remember that we need God's grace. God is light and in Him is no darkness. It's very easy to come along and say, well... I don't do that. I'm not a murderer. I'm not a thief. I'm not a fornicator, an adulterer. I'm not a, a drunkard. But if we lie, yeah, people will lie. And I, 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 do, I do challenge people to say they're not thieves. Uh, we may not steal. We may not intend to take things that are not our own. But sometimes we do that. We need to return the things that we take that are not our own. But uh, we, uh, we might uh, catch ourselves looking at, uh, looking at others not the way we should. That's lust. Uh, we sometimes will get angry without a cause or jealous or envious. To come along and say, uh, we have no sin, we have no need of God's grace, <coughs> that's deception. Everyone needs well, you God's grace. You said that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I said, it's it's, uh, it's uh, we are deceiving ourselves. We're not deceiving God. God's not going to be deceived. We're not really deceiving others because others are going to come along. Yeah, right. 
only when we're tricking is ourselves, and when we trick ourselves this way, that means we don't do what verse 9 says, confess our sins to God so that God can forgive us our sins. That's the danger. When we, when we deceive ourselves in that, we, uh, the truth is not in us. We're lying to ourselves. So our, deceiving ourselves may be done by saying we have no sins, may also be done by hearing and not doing. Let's go to James chapter 1. This will be cherry. James chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. James chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. James chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. Okay, be doers of the word and not hearers only. We can deceive ourselves into thinking that we're righteous. We go to church. We sit and we, we, we sing. We, we, we listen to God's word. But if we take what the, the speaker says, say, okay, this is what the speaker said today. Ah, I don't really care about that. That really didn't affect me. That really wasn't that really wasn't a sermon aimed at me, so I'll just I'll, I'll take that and ah eh, well if I get around to it I'll do it. No, if the, if it's from the Bible, we need to we need to do it. We need to okay okay how can I take what we learned today and how can I apply it in my life? Uh, there there's always lessons we can learn if we do not do what the Word of God is. And the Word of God says. If we just hear it, then we're not, well, we're deceiving ourselves. God doesn't want us just to be hearers of the Word. Anyone can do that. He wants us to actually do it. So we can deceive ourselves by doing it. We can deceive ourselves by thinking we are something when we are nothing. That's very easy. What would we call that? Pompous. Pompous. In other words, holier than that. Okay. Yeah. There's another word. <laughs> Arrogant. Arrogant. That was the word I was looking for. The other two words were great words too. It's very easy to come along and say, "Look at me. I have to guard against this. I'm a preacher here, and people people ask me questions all the time as it concerns as it concerns uh, what what the Bible says." But most of the time, I'll probably have an answer for it. It's very easy to come along and be proud and be arrogant. Uh, for uh, I study the Bible every day, and I can I can help guide people uh, to Christ uh, through the Word, and therefore it's all me. That's what we're studying in First Corinthians that Paul's trying to teach <clears throat> that we are not to esteem others above that which is written. We are not to think of the man above the word of God because I still have to follow it. Everything that I preach, I preach to myself too. And if I'm not following it, uh, that's, uh, I might be helping others, I'm not helping myself. And I, if I think of myself as something rather than not, uh, rather than where I am, that's a problem, Gordon. It's funny how man will clasp onto 
other men that are popular, famous, mm -hmm. you know, follow me on Twitter. How many millions of people follow this icon or that icon on Twitter but refuse to follow God who is the ultimate icon? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, people followed uh, Kobe all through his career. He's dead. Mm -hmm. God's still around. Why don't people follow him as much? Yeah. Priorities. Yeah. They're putting all their, uh, you know, they're worshiping man. Yeah. Uh, we need to guard against that. We, we need to guard against raising ourselves up to places <clears throat> we shouldn't be. Yes, that's not wrong for someone to feel good about what they do. But we must put it all in perspective. It's not wrong to come along and say, well, I'm a Christian. Paul said it. I'm a Christian. But if we raise ourselves up onto such a high pedestal and say, well, they're not Christians. I'm a Christian. We all need God's grace. We shouldn't be raising ourselves up to say, well, I'm better than them. No. All men and women are equal when it comes to God. We all need God's grace. And yes, other people might have different roles when it comes to the church, or even in our secular lives, but that doesn't make them more important to God, and we shouldn't treat them as more important. Uh, ignoring that we reap as we sow. In Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8, we read, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. We, whatever we sow, whatever we plant, that's what we're going to get. If, any, if, in this, if I go and plant potatoes, I'm going to get potatoes. I shouldn't expect to get watermelon. I shouldn't expect to get corn. I'm going to get potatoes if I planted potatoes. And the same goes with any other type of plant. If I, if, I, if I planted something, that's what I'm going to get. Well, if I sow to the flesh, I'm going to get what the flesh is. And I'm not going to take too much out of the next lesson. But if I sow to the spirit, I'll reap everlasting life. That's what we need to remember. Uh, people come along and try to dance with the world a little bit. Well, you're going to get what the world gives you. And you're not, that's not everlasting life. So we can deceive ourselves by doing that. So we need to, uh, conquering self involves not deceiving ourselves. Conquering ourselves means we learn self-control. Let's go to Annie, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. Yes, 27, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. God has a punish my body and be slowly so that after proclaiming for others, I myself should not be. All right, let's, uh, I know we haven't read the entire chapter, but let's, uh, let's, uh, who's talking here? Paul. Oh, Paul's talking. So that's, that's, that's important for us to know. But I discipline my body. Paul's talking. Who's Paul? Apostle. He's an apostle. Right and he's writing to the Corinthian brethren. That, that's important. We would think of an apostle. Okay, Jesus selected this man. This man's a righteous man. This man doesn't sin. Is that right? No. no, that's not right. And Paul's making that point here. He has to discipline his body and bring it into subjection. Unless he preached to others. This is one of those other passages that teaches us that once we're saved, we're not always saved. Paul here, he wouldn't be preaching to others if he wasn't a Christian. But he was preaching to others, and he said, if I don't bring my body into subjection, it will take me off into sin, and I'll be cast away. I'll be disqualified. I won't get what I'm preaching to others. I'm preaching to others, you need to do this so you can go to heaven, and then I don't make heaven myself. What a shame. 
That's what the Pharisees were doing. Yeah. Do this. Don't do what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, all, uh, only they were doing it more publicly. A lot of Christians do it in secret. Where it looks like they are walking the walk and they're really not. So we need to learn control. Self-control. We are to add self-control as part of the Christian life, and that's uh, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. We won't read that. But remember, it's add to faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, patience, uh, to patience, and self-control. We have self-control needing to be added to our faith. Uh, we have, I think self-control actually was third. Uh, but that's what we need to add. Controlling self. If we don't control self, it will lead us off into sin. We need to cleanse ourselves. That's that's part of conquering self. To cleanse ourselves. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Come up to Tim. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. Since we have this promise, he has let us purify ourselves from everything that can make our Eastern spirit. Completing holiness out of the reins of the reins of God. Alright, Tim's version had purify, cleanse is another word uh, as that this, that this uh, our lesson book's using. What does that mean? Purify ourselves and cleanse ourselves. Well, the only way we can purify ourselves is to ask for forgiveness mm -hmm. through Jesus. Yeah, that's the only way it can be done. But notice here, it's active. We don't come along and say, Jesus, cleanse me, and I'm going to do nothing. That doesn't work that way. We have to call on God to cleanse us of our sin. I can't cleanse myself of my own sin by myself. But God's not going to cleanse me of my sins if I just decide, well, I'm going to let God do everything. I'm not going to do anything. No, this is an active. Having these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness. Or what did Jesus always say to those who he forgave their sins? Just go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's an ongoing thing. You ask for forgiveness, and you try and continue not to sin. Yeah. And and if we don't do that, then we're not going to receive forgiveness because that's not true repentance. Uh, when 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 it, we just get to a point where we don't care, it's a problem. Uh, and we need to cleanse ourselves. We need to make sure that we are asking God to forgive us. We need to make sure that we are trying to avoid things that would cause us to sin. And lastly, conquering self involves saving ourselves. That's something that a lot of people don't think about. They think, well, God saves me, and he does. I'm not saying God doesn't save us. But we save ourselves as well. Let's come up to Sandy, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 40. version would have to save yourselves from this perverse generation. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Come over to Tikala. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 16. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 16. Pay close attention to yourself and to teach and to your teaching for both in these things. For <clears throat> for as you do this, you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who fear you. 
You will ensure salvation for yourself. You will save yourself. God is willing to save us if we will obey. There is a dual part to salvation. God is not going to reach down and save a man or a woman if they don't save themselves. Sort of like you're in a ditch. God's putting his hand down into the hole. You need to put your hand up to grab his hand, and he will pull you up. But until you reach out to his hand, he's not going to, he can't, he can't grab you. You're not willing. Some people want to stay in the hole. They'd rather stay there. They think, well, there's water down in this hole. I can just drink from that. And there's other things down in this hole. I'll just eat that. It's garbage, yes, but, eh, well, doesn't, uh, doesn't mean anything to them. If we want to be pulled out of the hole of sin, we've got to reach up. God will pull us out, but we've got to reach up. We've got to save ourselves. So no one or anything can keep us out of heaven but ourselves in disobedience. God will not forsake us. If there's any forsaking going on, it will be ourselves. 1 John 5, verse 18 says, But he that is begotten of God keeps himself, and that wicked one touches him not. Well, look at the Israelites when they were going to take the promised land and the spies. And, oh, these guys are huge. We can't do it. Well, they didn't reach out to God. And, you know, only two people out of that generation were able to, because they, they still said from the, the, the get-go, yeah, we can still do it. Yeah. You know, look what happened. They wandered for an extra 40 years yeah. because of that. Then when they had God in God's favor and they got him, they, you know. Yeah. It's, it, it's important that we're involved in our own salvation. God had to do his work first. But we're involved in our own salvation. We need to have the proper attitude towards self, <clears throat> recognizing that God comes first. And everything else comes after that, including ourselves. I'm not ashamed to...